Hey guys, Josh here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you strafe lock. What's your favorite leg lock? Neighbor, toe hold, heel hooks, or foot lock? In my case, I really like to do strafe lock. Just because I can use it in any type of rules, gi and no gi. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the strafe lock and two to three ways to finish I'm going to show you. Hope you guys enjoy it. All right. Let's start with understanding the basic structure of a straight hook lock hold, which is going to be really important. If you can hold your partner suit properly, you can make the straight hook look very strong. So this is the first step. Okay, like literally the name, I want to trap his head. Then the time I trap, I want to hold a part that's the smallest diameter, right? which is right above your partner's heel or right above your partner's shoelace. That's the place I want you to look for. Of course, if I just start with holding like this, the rest of the part of his body is active. That's why he can do lots of things to defend. He maybe uses other hurt. Once that happens, we can no longer proceed in action. That's why, first, we like to isolate a person's leg, like one of their legs. So in that situation, we just want to start with like, a, like two on one, like this way, or making a pan script, like the leg drag or bending ball entry. You can even make hook like this, this situation. Then I have isolated. Yeah, also, I don't want you to forget, take care of the other leg as well, like using the other one like this. See, you can see from the top view. Oh, this is how we set, like, isolate a person's leg. Then from this position, we're going to trap our person's head and ankle. So from here, scoop hips forward, and then I lock like this. Then at the beginning of the time, I hold. The lock is too deep, right? I can't even connect my hands yet. That's why from this position, as soon as I set up, I grab my own collar. That's the other side, not the near side, okay? So that situation, I can even use my other hand, then I pass like this, okay? I made a frame. So this one, good thing is I can do multiple things with my left arm, like holding his ankle, or like making a tight frame instead of using my both hands. So this is the first step. But at the beginning of the time I made, it's not tight now. Right? While he likes his boot on, then he can make, his, make the pair stiff or I can make it deeper. Our goal is to make it shallow as much as possible. So from this position, once you set it up, so you use this hand to push your person's shin or knee like this. Then we made a frame around your person's knee line here. Then from this position, we're gonna make it shallower. Since we stop here, it's much easier to make it like this. Right? If you wanna make it stronger, you can make the pan script. That's like Mikey, he does. Like one, two. But I want you to be careful that I don't want you to expose your personal heel in the time you go. I'm gonna explain later, it's about detail. Somehow, so here, like one, two. Now I start making the frame against the diameter part. Like that's right above his heel and the right form is shoelace like this. Then if I do that, I should be able to even reach his person's toes like this. This is a frame, you see the frame pressure. Right? So this one, right? If that is not reaching the smallest diameter, your person wouldn't feel any pressure at all for sure. So that's why this is the first step I want to practice in. Then even this time, I don't want you to forget to keep the frame here or here. If you just open your legs like this, your person can move his leg side to side. That's why here or here, then make it shallower. Then once it's set up, now I show the first one. It's like the deadlift, how to finish it, right? So from here. Now I don't need to take care of the far side. It's more like using both of my legs to make a dominant frame against the leg I hold. So from this position. I step his hips, then I scoop my hips forward like this. See? I start in a deadlift. Then my apple is already away from him. That's why he cannot even reach my car to finish it. Whenever it happens, you wanna block him like this. Then in rules, we are not allowed to go this way ourselves. This is a knee leaping. That's why I want you to either stay belly down or going this way. I should have variation to, to finish to go to this one. The first one, I want you to understand the structure. So from this position, once you've done it, step your partner's hips, slightly lean back on your toes. Then, all we're gonna do is raise your hips up. Like to the hip thrust, a deadlift. 
then it's gonna be lots of pressure on his ankle, like this. Then this one, probably your person has no room to defend or resist in it because this is a dominant pressure here, even around here. Then this one is a little gray, not like a finishing the ankle, it's more like a beat up around here. But as long as we make the frame, like using around this part, this means we recognize as trade hook lock. Then once you understand the basic structure, we can make more leverage. That's like a lean back. So we set up set, same as this one like this, right? this way. Then in this movement, you may be a little concerned about losing your partner's hair, but it's okay. Like right before he pulls out his hair, that's the sweet spot we can take in it. That's why if your partner tries to pull it out, you can even encourage them like this. But I want you to be careful there. You're not gonna release your partner's heel. This kind of trendy move. If you start with this type of lock, this be recognized heel hair. That's why it's completely legal in Jujutsu. Just be, just be careful. So don't lose your partner's heel. Even though he tries to do, keeping it tight like this. Like using around this part, then pinching. So we can avoid it. Then next one, let's make it stronger. Last one. You will just only lean back in a straight angle. That means there's be a limit. Once I put my back on the ground, I can no longer lean back or like doing a deadlift. But how do I get on my side? Here, like this position. As I get on my side, there's be more space on my back. There's nothing that I stop that I stop me. Then from this position, in order to stay in this side. I want to use my hand as well like this. What he likes is pull my knee to drag me to the other side, and then he can unlock. That's really common. That's why here, of course, you got to tack it in. Plus, hand. This is very important. Once you've done it, it could be way harder for him to turn to the other side. Even if he tries to open my knee, he can't do that. Then I haven't applied pressure yet. I'm going to make it stronger from now. Once you set it up, you slightly lean back as we run on your person's head, like toes, like this. Then I want to see that I made this one completely straight. Then I've already hold this, like hold right above his heel with my lap. Then from this position, I do lean back, same as like a deadlift motion. Then that's gonna be like huge amount of pressure around here. Then I can finish it. This is way stronger than the last one I show you. So I set it up here. I use the other side, adjust. Once I adjust, step, i on my side. This is not good enough. I put my hand on the mat like this. Once it's done, I slightly lean back. I have a private pressure, but he already feel a lot of pressure here. Now, I lean back more and then lean forward. This is the second one. This is race on the last one and more leverage. Okay, one more. That's a combination from the last one. We're gonna make it stronger. Last one, we were on the side. Next one, we're going to be belly down. That's the same as armbar. The regular armbar, like a flat back armbar, like armbar on the side and belly down. It's getting stronger one by one. So it's the same idea here. I set up this position here. I was gonna be on my side like this. But this time, it seems like we, we can find more space to put this knee on the mat. Let me just unlock this one. Otherwise, it's going to huge amount of pressure on his ankle by the time I explain. So from this position, what we're going to do is make more angle as if I twist him, his ankle, not his knee. I step his hip like this, and then I get on my knees like this. Especially the time he reacts, since he wants to release his knee like this one. Yes, he starts leaning on this side. Now he gives me a space and leverage to come to belly down. So from this position. In the actual situation, I use my hand like this, but I just raise it here. So from here, I drive my knees like this, and then it's gonna be the same thing. I use my hand as well. Then I want you to pass the hands forward, like as fast as possible. This is how you make the dominant base. If that is closer like this, I don't have much good base. That's why, from this position, I set it up like this, this, and this way, like. Then, this is just a thrust in the hips. It's pretty strong. 
although he wants to defend it, there is nothing he can stop it. Then, very brutal straight lock. I really like to do that. Then it works very well during a time in double guard or betting ball game. I'll show you that one as well. Okay, I show you how to set up straight hook lock in the inversion or betting ball game. So I get into betting ball like this. But sometimes I cannot make a control around his hips or it's a bit shallow. So in that case, I raise my hips up, then I start holding it in this position. One more time, I'll show you. Get on my side. Even in this situation, he wants to release my leg like this. Then I cannot find a space to do that. So in that case, I get inversion, and then I come to this position. Then as I get inversion, it's much easier to reach his ankle. I hold it. Then once it happens, I start setting up the position like this. Then I just started like, the part two, like uh, on the side. Then I grab my own color, make it shower like this. Then make sure you pass his hand on the mat. Once you set it up, use your hand, then your belly down. The time you do the movement, I want you to make sure you keep your knees on the ground, then you stretch. This is how to set up and finish during the bearing bottle. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, Please just hit like button, leave any comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Thank you guys. I'll you guys catch in the next video. Bye.